Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Indie 500 Project Vodcast. In this episode, we went to the Indie Arcade Automat in Gothenburg, Sweden, and we got to talk to the uh, exhibitor and we got to talk to some of the developers about their game and what's uh, going on in their future. And we thought we'd show it to you right here. So enjoy. So we're at uh, Automat, the Indie Arcade. Why are we here? Hi, um, we are here because uh, I want to show all of the amazing indie games and indie arcades that people are building uh, around Sweden and also from Denmark. So I'm trying to bring all of the uh, all of the sort of indie automat sort of indie uh, indie arcade culture to Gothenburg. And who are you? And I am Shell Hoftien. I I am the chairman of. Uh, Data Spells Academy, which is an organization in, uh, from Gothenburg who are working to uh, promote video games as an art form. And we have done that for two years now by, by doing different kinds of collaborations with um, cultural institutions around Gothenburg, doing uh, seminars, uh, exhibitions, and uh, panels discussing indie games and other uh, phenomena. Uh, around uh, ro revolving around video games, so and sort of this is this uh, indie arcade thing that we're doing now is sort of the thing I've always wanted to do w from for all the way from beginning uh, from the beginning with Data Spells Academy. So sort of arrived at a point where I really enjoy myself and really want to be. Are there any plans for building a full-sized arcade, or is this uh, just going to be a one-time event? Well, I'm inspired by other d similar events, uh, among others, or the biggest one is uh, Baby Castles in New York. And that is an event that uh, inspired me a lot because to me it seems, I I've never actually attended, but to me it seems that this is a place where people really are very creative, both with uh, the software end of the game and also the hardware, where for, ex for instance they just, as a cabinet, uh, uh, they just put um, a screen and a computer inside a teddy bear and just put out stuffing and just put a screen inside it. And I, I'm really into that sort of creativity and sort of making the hardware, um, taking control of the hardware and the software. And that, that's really something that appeals to me. So, Are there any games here that we will see out in the wild or is this uh, just exclusive for this event? All of, the, all of these games are available uh, on the internet now, actually, and I'm going to put up a list on our Tumblr, uh, automatarcade.tumblr.com, and also on the event, because uh, a lot of people have been asking me, uh, what are these games, and we want to get them, we want to play them. The thing is that I really like the th the idea that you can that these are games that you're supposed to play at an event, at, and that's the whole idea about the indie arcade that you come here and play these games and discuss them and, and have fun and it's a very social thing. So I'm really hoping that uh, we are going to do this again uh, and I, I, know, I know we're going to do this again. Maybe gonna travel around Gothenburg or maybe travel around Sweden, we'll see. We don't really know yet what's gonna happen. But what I'm hoping is that a lot of people will, will be inspired by this event and make their own cabinets and their own games and just try to uh, grow that culture here. Um, yeah. Some of these cabinets are very intricately built. It seems very like do-it-yourself projects. Are these games all going to be complicated to put together, or are they just going to be available for anyone with a PC or a 360 or something like that? That's the thing that a lot of these games are four-player games, which means that uh, you need basically you need. I, no, the most practical thing is that if you have for Xbox 360 Windows controllers, uh, that's what a lot of these games are using. But then there are also uh, games that are single-player games and, and, and other kinds like that. And then we have these uh, sort of more physical games like Juan Sebastian Joust, where you have, uh, uh, at least we are using now, six, six PlayStation Move controllers with a, with a Mac. I think you can use it at a, uh, with a PC as well. And that's the thing that you need a lot of people to play it. So, on these kinds of events, where a lot of people gather, uh, it's it's really it's really convenient to to play these games at these events. But of course, you can play it at your home in in the living room. I mean, Joust is a game where you're supposed to push and shove each other in a sort of semi-friendly kind of manner, um, which which means that uh, a living room might not be a, the the best place to do that sort of game. But 
you could do it absolutely so it's just it's up to anyone who wants to do it thank you very much and I hope you see you at uh, more events like this absolutely thank you thank you very much we are here with my name is Niklas Ström and uh, why are you here today well I'm here because um, I built an arcade machine and a game and made music and yeah but I, I brought the thing yeah anyway what game has you, have you made it's a game called uh, Mrs. Dad and it's a four player game where you eat dots, get bigger and kill each other. Very simple concept. How do you come up with it? I don't know. Uh, the other game uh, guys uh, came up with it uh, on a train ride. So, um, is this uh, game readily available today? Yeah, sure. You can download it from um, redgrim.com or even play it on the Ouya. It was one of the launch titles for Ouya, right? Yeah, it was uh, Mrs. Dad versus Curve. Like Curve. How did that concept come come to be? Um, I was going to have um, a doomsday party and Martin decided to make a game for it. So he wanted to make a doomsday game. So he made a game with sausages and hamburgers chasing each other for dots. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's about it. Uh, how, are the, how, how have the reactions been here today? Uh, really good. People are playing it. Uh, like crazy. I walk away and it's full. So it's really good. And how has the reaction been online? I don't know. Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen that much reaction actually. But uh, some people have liked it, I think. People don't understand how to play. That's the biggest issue. <laughs> but if they, if they do, then they think it's a good game. So. Do you get any reports from Ouya? On like how many downloads it has and some stuff like that. No, no, I don't have that uh, numbers. The, the other guys have it. So I don't. Mm. Thank you very much for talking to us. Ah, oh, thank you. All right, we're here with. Uh, my name is uh, Robert S. Bjornsson, uh, I'm the creator of uh, Kna. And what is Kna? Uh, Kna is a game about uh, pushing, basically. So it's a really simple premise, but it's. Um, it's made into a quite complex game with a lot of tactics. And it's a multiplayer game where you can play up to 16 players locally. Uh, and the goal is simply to push the boxes back to your base and try to keep them there while the other players try to steal them. How many controls does 16 player require? Uh, you play four player on each controller, so you need uh, four controllers to play with uh, 16 players. Uh, you can play uh, with just one controller, but then it's limited to uh, two teams and four players. What is the goal of the game? The goal of the game is uh, simply to uh, get all the boxes to get the highest score at the end of each round. Uh, in the future I plan to uh, make a more of uh, a progress style where you unlock things along the way and make sort of like a campaign for unlocking the multiplayer stuff. Uh, just to give it a bit more flavor and add variety uh, when you're new to the game. It's, uh, right now it can be a bit overwhelming with a lot of stuff happening at once so you kind of get confused. So kind of like a nice progression, uh, uh, sort of a hidden tutorial all the way th through basically. Is this game available today? Uh, right now it's not available. Uh, I plan to put it up on Steam Greenlight and uh, I still have a few things left I want to get in there before I put it up there. Uh, but it will be uh, available sometime in the future. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm here with... Hi, I'm Jon from Glitchnap. And I'm, I guess, I'm sort of the, the duct tape developer and Matt's is more of the like, you know, actual nails and screwing things so they fit better developer but he can introduce himself. Hi, I'm Mass. I'm also a developer at Glitchnap, and I apparently fix things. Jonas from Glitchnap in Copenhagen, Denmark. And why are you here? What are you, what are you showing us? So we're here uh, with two arcade machines and a couple of different games that we've made, uh, which are all local multiplayer games. Um, this game right here that we're looking at is called uh, Laser Knights, and it's uh, a game about four noble knights fighting for the f future of all possible futures in the Laserverse. Um, and it's basically a local multiplayer game in like a very pixely sort of 8-bit style, uh, very intense, very, uh, very competitive. Um, and it brings people uh, together uh, in a good way where uh, they'll hopefully end up being, uh, you know, shouting at each other and having like a really intense uh, short like two three minute play session. 
Uh, I've seen that you can uh, joust with each other in this long. You can collide into each other. Right. So uh, you play as a you play as a little knight uh, riding on a horse, and you have a lance. This lance uh, is a laser lance. So it can either uh, you can either shoot people from a distance, or you can get up real close and just joust into people uh, to knock them off their horses. Uh, is it possible to do a Pac-Man cross through? It is not. But oh wait, no. Yes, it is. Yes, it's possible to do a Pac-Man cross room. That's basically uh, one of the strategies of the game is to try and hide your little knight in the corner um, and try and sneak up on people without them knowing. Um, So yeah, definitely. Um, and basically, uh, the game has a bunch of, besides the core game mechanics, the game has a couple of uh, power-ups. So you can either like activate a death ray, or you can have get haste, or you can get rapid fire, or you can uh, activate my favorite power-up, which is the one where you just go backwards. Let's move on to the next game. So what we have here is what we call the baby cave, and it's essentially uh, a baby stroller that we outfitted as an arcade machine. And it's running um, a game called the Chain Ga- Game, and it's uh, 60 local multiplayer games that each last 60 seconds for four players. And you start out uh, on game one, and you play through that, and you accumulate points in that game. And then once the game is over, you go to the next game, and the next game, and so forth. And the winner of the chain game is the guy who has the most, or girl, who has the most points at the end. And it takes one hour to play. Well, you can lower the amounts of games that you want to make, or that you want to play. Um, but yeah, I, you know, ideally you play this for an hour with, your, uh, with three of your best friends. And so all the games actually came from um, uh, a game jam that we held. Um, And where we uh, gave people the constraint of making a local multiplayer game for four people that takes 60 seconds to play. And everybody was open and welcome to submit uh, games electronically. So we actually have games running from all over the world in this, uh, in this chain game. Uh, we have games from Ecuador, we have games from Spain, we have games from uh, Scandinavia, uh, basically all over the world. Are these games readily available today? Yeah, so you can go to chaingame.com and uh, just play this in your browser. We have, if you want to use your own controllers and plug them into your computer, we have uh, you know different resources that you can download and like different configurations. So it's super easy to set up. Uh, so all you need to do is basically just uh, you know get three friends and have a blast. Thank you very much for showing us this game. Are, do you have any more here? Uh, we have another game that's also running on this baby cake called Go Nuts. Uh, which is a, an, an abusive glitch game uh, for four players. Um, it's basically, uh, I would say it's sort of like Hokra um, from the recent Sports Friends uh, Kickstarter campaign that, that got a lot of traction. But it's essentially a game about pushing uh, a ball into one of four corners. You have to, put, if you get the ball into your corner, uh, you lose a point. And if you get it into someone else, Uh, you win a point. So that's pretty simple, except throughout the game, different things happen. That's the best way I can describe it. The game sort of starts glitching. All of a sudden, every, uh, every object on the screen looks like a ball, so you don't know, you know which one is the ball. Uh, maybe all of a sudden, you're not just one player, but you control 100 players uh, on the screen. So that's pretty much go, that's pretty much, that pretty adequately describes Go Nuts, I would say. Thank you very much for talking to us. And uh, when can we see uh, new courage creations from you guys? Uh, hopefully next year, uh, early next year. Uh, we're cooking up some different projects. Uh, hopefully they'll be the ones we already have will be more readily available on different platforms. And uh, we're working on a different game um, called Zumbi, which is. Uh, a game for two to in an infinite amount of players where you have to survive the zombie apocalypse with the help of your friends. Um, hopefully you'll hear a lot more about that uh, in 2014. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're here with Jacob Michelson. And uh, what have you brought to this uh, little mini convention? Well, it's a well ca- new kind of like uh, immersive arcade game where you step into a dark room 
and then you have like it's kind of like a flashlight but it's actually a projector and you project the game world on the walls of this dark room it's one of the more elaborate setups it, it would seem just what components are a part of this oh yeah it's a lot i keep track of it's Uh, you hold this thing in your hand, which is uh, the projector, but it's also a PlayStation Move controller. So I have a PlayStation and connected to a camera, which tracks this controller. And uh, there's also another player who holds an extra controller. So you're two people collaborating. And uh, this projector, which you're holding, is also connected to a smartphone which gets uh, the, like, the game sent over network from a host computer. And I've got wireless network and stuff like that running and a surround sound system, so it's extra immersive. Are there any plans to making this full scale? You mean like commercial or in a bigger room? I was uh, thinking more commercial thing. Uh, not at the moment. I've been thinking about it, but it really requires that you have your own special space for this. Uh, maybe it won't be suitable for home use, but I could maybe see that like Lisa Barry, the amusement park here in town, could maybe have some kind of attraction based on this, where you, with like pretty small hardware, portable projectors built into the controllers, make it seem like you're actually in a much bigger virtual environment. If, if people have the hardware, can they make this at home? Uh, in theory, it's like not really any special components it's off the shelf parts that i cobble together but it requires quite a lot of like calibration and setup so i mean if you have a week and over and all the parts i guess you could do it so what are the future plans for this game not really uh, much at the moment for this game it may be shown on conventions and stuff uh, but the Uh, I mean, the, the principle behind it, projecting, uh, projecting out the computer world so it seems like it's actually on the walls and you move the projector around and it follows. Uh, we're looking at maybe using it for th some other uh, applications at the Interactive Institute where I'm working. So I don't know, I'm, I'm giving away this thing I've built for, for my workplace, but uh, we're looking at maybe using it for some archaeology stuff showing... Uh, showing like uh, how places looked through history, uh, this kind of where you track and project stuff. Sounds like there could be some uh, uh, academic value into it. Uh, yes, this is actually my master thesis I'm doing here. Uh, so it's uh, I'm investigating how immersive or like engrossing, it's not really a well-defined term, this kind of projected augmented reality experiences. A projected augmented reality, that's a good way to summarize it, I guess. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So that's it for this episode of the Indie 500 Project Vodcast. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be placing all the links to the exhibitors, developers, and games in the description. So until next time, happy gaming is sort of the thing I've always wanted to do from, from all the way from beginning uh, from the beginning with Data Space Academy so sort of arrived at a point where I really enjoy myself and really want to be are there any plans for building a full-sized arcade or is this uh, just going to be a one-time event well I'm inspired by other d similar events uh, among others or the biggest one is uh, Baby Castles in New York and that is an event that Uh, inspired me a lot to show all of the amazing indie games and indie arcades that people are building uh, around Sweden and also from Denmark. So I'm trying to bring all of the uh, all of the sort of indie automat sort of indie uh, indie arcade culture to Gothenburg. And who are you? And I am Shell Hoftien. I I am the chairman of uh, Data Spels Akademin which is an organization in, uh, from Gothenburg who are, because to me it seems, I, I've never actually attended, but to me it seems that this is a place where people really are very creative, both with uh, the software end of the game and also the hardware, where for, ex for instance they just, as a cabinet, uh, uh, they just put um, a screen and a computer inside a teddy bear and just put out stuffing and just put a screen inside it. And I, I'm really into that sort of creativity and sort of, making the hardware, um, taking control of the hardware and
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Indie 500 Project Vodcast. In this episode, we went to the Indie Arcade Automat in Gothenburg, Sweden, and we got to talk to the uh, exhibitor and we got to talk to some of the developers about their game and what's uh, going on in their future. And we thought we'd show it to you right here. So enjoy. So we're at uh, Automat, the Indie Arcade. Why are we here? Hi, um, we are here because uh, I want working to uh, promote video games as an art form and we have done that for two years now by, by doing different kinds of collaborations with um, cultural institutions around Gothenburg, doing uh, seminars, uh, exhibitions and uh, panels discussing indie games and other uh, phenomena uh, around, uh, ro revolving around video games. So. And sort of this is this uh, indie arcade thing that we're doing now 